and welcome. It is time once again for the CU Immigration Show here on WRFU LP Urbana 104.5 FM. I will be your host for this evening. My name is Mr. Garza, and I am here to let you know that WRFU is an open forum for the Urbana Champaign community. Yeah. Views expressed are those of the speakers and are not intended to represent WRFU, UCIMC, Urbana Socialist Forum, or, as we like to say on the televised version of this show, UPTV. These views are our own, and by our, in this instance, I mean myself, and uh, perhaps anyone whose story I might be reading, and their views might sneak in there somewhere in the text of the, the story, and you will, you will be getting views other than mine. But otherwise, it's just me, 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 myself, and I. So, um, yeah, immigration. Hot topic these days. Why, you may ask? Well, it's been a hot topic for a long time, ever since the anti-immigration uh, party platform um, managed to sneak by and get elected. They have continued to do their best to make it a hot topic this entire time, even though there not much has actually changed in terms of people coming here. Uh, for a while it was going down, and then it started to go back up again. You know, it's, it's kind of the same thing from the outside coming in, but it's a very different thing from the inside uh, looking outwards. And we've spoken about it at great lengths about what's going on and who's doing what and why. Uh, the latest, uh, what would you call it? <laughs> it's so hard. You know, it's, what's really hard is separating the, the truth of the stories, the truth of the events that are occurring from the media presentation of them, both in the sense of how media presents these stories or how it attempts to present them and how they are being played by the various um, political actors who are attempting to use the media to their advantage and, and use them to tell stories. Um, and that's a, that's a big deal, actually. That's a really big part of what's going on because it's, it affects how we, both uh, the people who are directly affected by it and people who are sort of tangentially affected by it, you know, uh, how we are dealing with what's going on. Because everybody is reacting. There's so much acting <laughs> going on that uh, both in the sense of actual stuff that's happening, but really in a, in a, a much larger sense, things that are being performed, performative things that um, were made to feel like these things are happening or they're about to happen. So for the first part of um, the dump <laughs> presidency, I'll just leave the TR off, and, uh, a lot of it was acting. It was like I am about to do this or that terrible thing, so beware, I'm getting ready, I'm starting to move, and, and just getting people riled up and scared and, and concerned, and on the one side, and on the other side, getting them excited, like, yeah, finally somebody's going to stick it to those darn foreigners who are coming here and taking our jobs, or whatever it is that they think is going on. Um, <clears throat> so... For a long time, I'd come in here and I'd be like, well, there's a lot of talk, but there's not really, we're not seeing much, you know, action out of these people. They're not really even accomplishing as much as the previous administration. But that has changed in a way. Um, and, and in a very bad way. So basically what they did was spend the first year figuring out ways to make the system less just, more one-sided, and basically more cruel, more obviously cruel, uh, which leads me to my first story. I read this, um, I think it was today, or it might have been yesterday, anyway, uh, from a website called Talking Points Memo, 
And I thought it was really good because they thought it really captured kind of the essence of what's going on right now. So this is talking specifically about the family separation stuff, but it's also kind of generally about, you know, the president, the administration, uh, his supporters, what they're doing and why, and which I think is all part of, it's all baked into the story. It's all an ingredient of the larger story. Uh, I don't know. Anyway, I'll just read it and then, then we can talk about it. So it, this is from, I said, from TPM. So it's amidst the ugliness and moral squalor of the Trump family separation policy, the current backlash provides an important window into the nature of Trumpism. U.S. law gives the government discretion over how to prosecute certain actions at the border. If they are prosecuted criminally, that leads to parents being separated from children. It is clear from lower court decisions in recent weeks that if the goal beyond family separation is deterrence or punishment, the policy has serious legal and constitutional problems. The problem for the administration is that the highest ranking members of the executive branch, Trump, Sessions, and others, have already stated explicitly that the aim is deterrence. This is not just sloppiness or indiscipline. The essence of Trumpism is dominus, dominance and punishment of those outside the tribal fold. It is probably even wrong to call this a policy of deterrence. It is a policy of punishment. At the most basic level, folks like Miller, Sessions, Trump, want to show they are kicking ass at the border against lawless non-white people. They want to do it, and they want to show they are doing it. For them, doing it doesn't matter unless you show it. It's what a TPM reader identified as the essence of Trumpism, performative cruelty. The problem, one of the problems, is that if you say that is the point, which they have repeatedly, you get in trouble in the courts. This amounts almost to an internal contradiction. You can commit all manner of evil with the federal government simply by making a series of discretionary decisions which lead inevitably to unconscionable evil results. There's a strong parallel here to the administration's Muslim ban. But if you say the cruelty is awesome, that you're doing it on purpose, a different scaffolding of law kicks into action. <clears throat> There's also the matter of channel conflict. Channel separation is a bedrock principle of marketing. You sell the same product to different people at different prices, price discrimination. You sell the same product to different people using different pitches. It all works so long as the channels remain largely separate. Since Trump is more than anything a marketing man, the framework of channel conflict is an appropriate way to explain what is happening. For base Trumpists, family separation for the bad people is simply awesome. For other pro-Trump pro -tump, chump, <laughs> Republicans, evil against children may not be okay, but abusing Democrats works. So for them, no defense of family separation as such, but stick it on the Democrats, blaming the, the opponents of your policy for policies perverse, nasty, and thus awesome. For more middle-of-the-road voters, it's simply not happening. There is no family separation policy. It's liter literally not happening at all, or if it is happening, it's being forced on us and families were separated under Obama too. It's, it's, let me re read that in a more correct way. It's literally not happening at all, or if it is happening, it's being forced on us and families were separated under Obama too. What we've seen this weekend is that evil practice on children by design with quotes from senior administration officials floating around saying it's great was just too much. This created a sort of 10-car pile of contradictory BS answers. It's awesome. The Democrats made us do it. It's not happening. And here we are. It is difficult to imagine this policy will survive the week in its current form given this firestorm. But we should recognize how deeply embedded the need for these actions is in Trumpism. This isn't a byproduct. Child separation as punishment on display was always a feature, not a bug. So basically, I, I think this is written in a slightly confusing way, but his point is that the reason we get, one, one of the reasons we get so many confusing explanations for this from uh, administration officials is because they're actually speaking to different audiences, but we get all that 
as if it's all directed to us. You know, the news media is good on going to this speech, to this group, uh, reading this tweet, doing this thing, and all these things, and then just bringing it all and saying, here it is. This is what they're saying about it. So we're seeing these different messages as if they're all intended for us, but they're really not all intended for us. They're intended for different groups to make different points to those people. But basically, I agree with what he's saying, that the hardcore supporters, the hardcore anti-immigration people are just fine with this. And you can see it in the comment sections all the time on this family uh, separation stuff where they say, hey, it's their own fault. If they weren't coming here trying to basically break into our country, uh, then we wouldn't have to do this. But they're criminals. So we, you, we arrest you for grand larceny. We're not going to take your kids to jail. Your kids go somewhere else and you go to jail. That's how it works. So when you're coming here, you're a criminal. That's what you can expect. I've heard this over and over and over again. This is like a standard refrain from these anti-immigrant folks. But the, the point is that's not what's happening. What's happening is they're choosing, consciously making the choice to treat everybody who comes across our border without the pro proper documentation and all that stuff as a criminal, even though they're prosecuting a lot of them with a misdemeanor, because that's all it is. It's just coming in misdemeanor. And some of these people, quite a few of them, are coming here wanting, seeking asylum. They turn themselves in. They come here and say, here, look, <laughs> my hands are in the air. I'm I'm looking for asylum, and they're taking them off to jail and treating them as if they're trying to break in. So basically anybody who crosses the border for any reason, who doesn't have the right papers, is considered to be trying to sneak in, break in, however you want to put it. They're treated as a criminal. They are sent off to jail, as, as you would with someone who'd like tried to steal your car or something like that. You know, they're being treated like that. And their children are taken from them and sent off to separate detention centers uh, because children can't be sent to prison. Um, that's what they're doing. But again and again and again and again and again, people are saying, oh, well, if they weren't trying to break in, they weren't trying to basically steal something from this country or whatever it is they think they're doing. I don't know. It's like a lot of these people look at immigrants as if they're invaders. They are invading our country. That's what they're doing. They're, it's, this is an invasion of people who are coming here presumably to take stuff, to steal stuff. To do, I mean, why do you invade? You invade because you're stealing land or stealing goods or stealing something or uh, wanting to take over or whatever the thing is. So <clears throat> that's in the imagination. That has become <clears throat> an e-day fix, as they say, <laughs> which if you uh, read your Sherlock Holmes, you'd know exactly what that means. It's a, a obsessive notion a fixed idea that you can't shake. That has become this, like, uh, obsessive belief of anti-immigrant folks is that immigrants are coming here, they're invading. They are invaders of this country, and when we let them in, however that happens, we're just sitting back. It's like uh, uh, soldiers at a castle going, just open the door, Whoever gets in, gets in. We don't care. Or we'll, you know, we'll ask a few questions on some of them. But if they climb over the walls, just ignore them. Don't worry about it. <clears throat> it's like the Trojan horse. They don't even need to hide in the horse. They just, just let them come on in. We don't care. That is their image of Democrats, progressive, anybody who argues with this kind of policy is we're being invaded and you don't care. You're doing nothing about it. If we don't have borders, if we don't police our borders, then we're not even a country. That is the chant that I've heard over and over and over again. <clears throat> it, it's, it's strange. I mean, I understand it intellectually. I get that idea. I get how that can be put into your head somehow. 
I can't believe that anyone could, I want to say, I'm trying not to say fall for that because, I mean, clearly there are people spreading that. They're trying to sell that notion. But there are a lot of people that are sort of inventing it on their own and then looking for others who also believe that. So uh, <clears throat> I don't understand how you can believe that unless you don't know any immigrants at all. Yeah. I mean, basically, I don't see how you can. <clears throat> the o only way you could believe that and know immigrants is if you only know them from a distance, like you've seen them over here or over there. You're like driven by and you see some people and like, oh, gosh, they're doing this kind of work or they're doing that sort of thing over there. Those people, they live in this area, uh, you know, maybe if you know them in the sense of have seen them around and developed some sort of negative reaction to them because you don't like the way they look or the way they dress or uh, whatever. I don't know. I mean, I don't really know because how do you know somebody's an immigrant? I mean, there are some people that are like clearly grouping together <laughs> with others of similar uh, ethnic background, and I suppose you could just assume that they're all immigrants because, hey, those people all look alike. They're over there, and they don't look like anybody I know. I mean, maybe you do it like that. I'm not quite sure. But in any event, it's it's really uh, it, it's beyond me in so many different ways to understand how people – I guess I'll put it this way. If you are someone who cares about the truth, you want to believe things that are true. You don't want to believe things that aren't true. You don't want to be anybody's fool. You don't want to be a patsy and have somebody say, hey, uh, do this. And you go, oh, okay, and you don't even think about it. You want to make your own decisions. You want to be responsible for yourself. Then you cannot possibly believe this crap because – if you're going to try to learn things, if you're going to try to understand things, there are ways to do it. It's not that hard. And you can figure it out. I mean, I'll grant you that my life, my choices in life bring me in contact with more immigrants than probably your average Midwestern dude um, is liable to run into on a more regular basis. I get to know people. I work with them. I have relationships with them, you know. So I'll grant you I'm a little farther into that scene, if you want to call it that, than uh, the average Illinois guy. Um, but even so, everywhere you go, <laughs> there are immigrants everywhere. And I suppose what a lot of people do is they just assume that if somebody is – sort of like them, seems reasonable. They can talk English. They can speak English. Um, you know, you can communicate with them. They, they'll laugh at some of the same jokes or whatever, that they're okay. They're probably, those are not the people that you're hating. It's the ones that, like, don't look you in the eye and, you know, are over there. Or, you know, some, I don't know what it is. It's some way of defining who is part of your team and who isn't. But anyway, um, Sadly, this there are enough people that feel this way that the current administration is able to at least convince itself that it has sufficient support for what it's doing. Apparently, they don't care that like the majority of people asked in polls think it's a terrible idea. Um, they're not concerned about that somehow. I'm not sure how, but maybe this next story will tell us something. So uh, this is, you may have read that uh, the Republicans in the House have, have been going back and forth on, uh, you know, there were a, a group that were saying, we're going to force a vote on some kind of immigration stuff. And the leadership was like, no, 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 we can't do it. And finally, they said, okay, well, we'll look at some ideas. So they've come up with a compromise immigration bill, or that's what they call it, that they're planning on voting on uh, sometime next week. So I'll read about this, because there are a lot of misleading stuff about this. 
uh, and I've seen it in headlines and whatnot. So I'll read this and then we'll talk about it a little bit. So it says, the compromise immigration bill released Thursday night by Republicans in the House of Representatives is set to come to the House floor next week alongside a more conservative alternative. It's a sweeping plan that covers everything from border security, including a promise of $25 billion for Trump's border wall, to a way for immigrants who are facing the loss of their protection under the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals, DACA, program to apply for legal status and ultimately possibly green cards and citizenship to cuts to legal family-based immigration that are partially offset by expanding permanent employer-based immigration. But House Speaker Paul Ryan and others are emphasizing a different aspect of the bill. They claim it would prevent the Trump administration from separating children from their parents at the U.S.-Mexico border, a practice the administration made widespread in early May and that has resulted in the separation of hundreds of families a week. Well, they're lying. The Republican bill doesn't outlaw family separation. It doesn't stop the Trump administration from choosing to pr prosecute asylum seekers who enter the U.S. between ports of entry, official border crossings, for illegal entry, which results in parents being sent into criminal custody without their children. And it doesn't even force the government not to separate parents who do present themselves legally for asylum from their children, something that has also been happening, though it isn't as widespread. What the House bill does is get rid of the extra legal protections that children and families have in immigration detention, a requirement that children be kept in the least restrictive conditions possible and that they not be detained any longer than necessary. This means that if the family is kept together, their parents must be released with them. The Trump administration calls those protections loopholes and blames them for forcing the administration to keep asylum seekers in custody by separating families. If the House bill passed, the Trump administration probably would stop separating families. Instead, it would be able to keep children and parents in ICE detention until their cases were resolved. That is, they could be held in detention indefinitely. The Republican summary of the new bill, as reported by Leanne Caldwell of NBC, claims that it ends family separation. Quote, accompanied alien minors apprehended at the border must not be separated from their parents or legal guardians while in DHS custody." Unquote. End quote. There is, however, no language like that in the bill. What exists, however, is the section called Clarification of Standards for Family Detention, which is a provision allowing ICE to detain immigrant children who come to the U.S. with their parents or guardians in the same way it would detain adults. There exists no presumption that an alien child who is not accompanied alien child should not be detained, and all such determinations shall be in the discretion of the Secretary of Homeland Security. The sentence would overrule a court agreement that's been in place for the past 20 years, called the Flores Agreement, that puts strict, strict limitations on when the government can keep children in immigration detention. The Flores Agreement requires that kids be released without unnecessary delay and that they are kept in the meantime in the least restrictive conditions possible. Courts have interpreted that agreement to mean that ICE can't detain families for more than 20 days in most cases. The Flores Agreement doesn't require the government to separate families. It just requires the government not to indefinitely detain children. But the Trump administration has decided to maximize the detention of asylum seekers, including parents, to prevent people from disappearing into the U.S. as unauthorized immigrants after they're released. This is the so-called catch-and-release policy Trump has railed against. Rather than release parents with their children, therefore, the administration is separating families so the parents can be detained while the children, sent to the custody of HHS as unaccompanied alien children, are ultimately placed with sponsors. The House bill allows the administration to keep families in immigration detention indefinitely. It doesn't even specify that there are any additional conditions on how children can be detained. There's nothing preventing the Trump administration from simply putting children in existing ICE detention centers for adults rather than expanding detention centers designed for families. 
Nothing in the bill requires ICE to keep parents and children together in detention. In fact, the mechanism that the Trump administration has generally been using to separate families, referring parents into custody of the Department of Justice for prosecution, isn't even addressed in the bill. The only reason the House bill could possibly end the separation of families would be if the Trump administration decided that because they now didn't have to release children from detention, they would stop prosecuting parents and they would make an effort to keep families together in ICE detention. But even then, that just means that children would be held in facilities that are essentially jails with their parents for months or even years until they ultimately received legal status or, more likely, until they were finally deported. So that gives you another perspective on this. So how can I put this? <clears throat> I frequently rail against Republicans <clears throat> on this show for a variety of reasons, but right here you have one of the main ones. There isn't as big a difference between Trump and Trumpism, and Republicans and so-called conservatism, or at least what they like to call conservatism, as it might seem. The difference is that most Republicans, conservatives, uh, self-styled conservatives, <coughs> try to operate within a certain set of parameters. And they try to do things that appear to be reasonable. Whereas Trump and his ilk don't even try to do that. In fact, as we noted in the first article, uh, they try to not be reasonable. They try to appear over the top. So they're always pushing the limits, always pushing to see how far they can go, what they can get. It's a, it's a constant thing. It's to beat you down so you just give up and quit resisting. So they're always trying to find another way to get what they want. It's, uh, it's just a, <clears throat> it's abusive, obviously, <laughs> but it's like hardcore sales tactic. It's like somebody that just will not take no for an answer. They just keep asking you and asking you and asking you and each time you say no they keep finding some other way of asking as if you had said nothing at all and that's the style that they choose other republicans may be pushing towards some of the same things but they generally have limits they have self-designed limits <clears throat> they want to appear reasonable they want to be taken seriously and a lot of them really don't like Trump. <clears throat> but as we have seen over and over again, they don't dislike him enough to do anything about him or to try to stop him. They will occasionally speak out and say, well, I would never do anything like that. I don't think that's a good idea. Uh, blah, 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 blah. You know, they, they try to sound like the reasonable person, but they don't do anything to stop him. And that's your secret. If you want to know, not secret, that's your clue. If you want to understand <clears throat> what's going on and why he's able to get away with this stuff, there you have it. It's the majority of Republican or self-styled conservatives <clears throat> 